So welcome to part two of this tutorial, the Victorian Garden Topiary. This is a Wild Orchid Crafts project. So here's where we left off. I was showing you the floral moss mat. Now I think this is like a, a 18 by 24 square that they folded, or 24 by 24, something like that. And I believe I got this at the craft warehouse, um, or Joanne's, one of the two. So it's a big piece um, of moss, and it, it's pretty sticky when they fold it. I don't know if it's because of the heat or what, but sorry, my head is in the way there. <laughs> so I just, I pulled it back, pulled a layer back, because um, I just needed the corner, really. So um, I'll just kind of open it as I go and, and as needed per project. So um, I just turned it upside down just to get the, just the piece that I need off. This is just me trimming off the excess so I'm just trimming just along the rim there because I am going to glue it down right on the rim. So there's the piece. And to get the hole in the center, <coughs> excuse me, I just folded it in half and uh, eyeballed the very middle and I just clipped it. I did a slit in the middle and then um, at an angle on both sides. And there's the hole. It does get covered with everything else, so. Um, but you know, I still try not to make it so big. So there we go. Now I'm just gonna pour some hot glue um, around the hole just to get that middle part uh, tacked down. So I'll hold it for just a sec. And it looked like it's on pretty nice and, and tight and adhered. So I'm just filling in the gaps there with the glue, and then I'll, I'll go around the entire rim and add the hot glue to get um, the very edges down, tucked down. This is a messy project, so um, this is something you may want to do outside. So there we are. I cleaned off my desk a little bit, um, and I did the edges, so I cut like just in, in curvy kind of, the way the mold kind of grows in little curvy round um, edges, um, I cut that out and, and uh, put them in different spots there around the pot. So this is another eyeball type of thing. Um, once you start piercing it in, don't pierce it all the way in. Um, do little bits by little bits and turn the pot so that you can see e at every angle, um, making sure that it's not leaning just in one direction. So I did little by little there and um, then I start turning it right there and uh, looking just to make sure if it's leaning towards like the right then I'll pull a little bit of it out and you'll see me do that there um, and then pierce it back down after I straighten it out a little bit so that's kind of what I did to the entire thing and it would be wise to mark it where you want to stop so here's some um, uh, branches of ivy that I found on clearance too at the craft warehouse and um, just use my wire cutters to trim off bits and pieces because I wasn't going to use the entire piece. They're nice big branches. Something you would put in a floral pot to decorate that you need a good mass of leaves and stuff. So um, I just kind of set that down, the smallest pieces down, and then I just glue them down with hot glue, um, getting it as close to the dowel as possible. And I use two types of leaves here. You'll be able to notice when I start putting it around the cone. Um, some leaves have this white edge and uh, some have um, just it's just green so I glue those down and then the the lace here on the very top part is the white cotton lace by Wild Orchid Crafts at LA00053 and um, it's a it looks like it's embroidered onto this very delicate tool type of fabric it's very very pretty and it's so soft so just tacked it down with the hot glue all the way around um, the bottom and at the very top. And here I was a little bit generous with the hot glue and getting the branches all the way tacked down uh, because there was the layer of the lace and the layer of the fabric of the burlap that um, it would adhere to. So if some of the styrofoam melted, you wouldn't be able to tell. Here's a more solid green ivy leaves. So just tacked it down at the very uh, top part there and you see the the lace trim at the very top so there it is basically that's the blow down on how to assemble it there's the around the 
vase there. And I have a little bit of flowers sitting over there by the dowel, and I ended up leaving those there. I glued them down, but um, after I sprayed them down with some stuff. So the punches that I did use are the little butterflies. It's G Studio at the top, EK Success, the orange, and then Martha Stewart branch. And here's the sprays of the Glimmer Mist that I used, um, and some gorgeous Lindy Color sprays. Lemon Grass Iridescent Golden Vintage Pink. And then I use Golden Sleigh Bells, uh, Fuzzy Naval Peach, Cosmopolitan Pink, a bit of Bubbly, and My Mojito Green, which are gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I have to do a review with you guys. <laughs> so again, here's this, uh, some of the stuff that I use. So the lace and the pearl sprays. And there's the ID numbers. You can pause in between. I use some seam binding and cameo beige and tulip. Very pretty colors, too. Some natural colored skeleton leaves. Some gardenias in this uh, deep ivory, which are small flat ones, and then yellow stem gardenias. Here's a cherry blossom in white. And I did leave these in white um, all around, scattered on the cone. Some carnations that Miss Natasha designed, and you'll see these on another online store too, um, her design. Here's some in green. Here's some tea roses, um, hybrid tea roses that are in cream. Some hybrid tea roses in deep red light burgundy and cream two-toned tea roses classic sweet roses in a two-tone two champagne pink and some trellis roses in white that are nice and large 40 millimeters are nice and big some cream colored wild roses love these and the tiny ones some aster daisies um, in ivory and gypsophila in ivory these are really small small flowers so information on the butterfly charms, I use filigree antique gold, which is JW00014, and there's the picture of it there. Beautiful, beautiful charm. And there it is again, the overall cone topiary with Wild Orchid Crafts products. So thanks, guys. The detail pics on, are over on my blog and as well as the supply list. Um, I'll put it down below this second video, too. So let me know if you have any questions in regards to the projects. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Jill signing out of the Jewel Box for Wild Orchid Crafts.